Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ryan Awesome, and welcome to the Ryan Awesome Show. Now today, now today on the Ryan Awesome Show, I'll be talking about NXT for April 13th, 2021. Now overall, man, you know, it was it was a okay show. It was a decent show. It wasn't the best show. You know, th- there were some things that I didn't, you know, that I didn't agree with, that I didn't like. You know, th- there were some things that I questioned. But yeah, it was it was a okay show. It wasn't it wasn't all that bad. You know, it wasn't all that good either. But yeah, and another thing, man. You know, when I was watching it, you know, I, I didn't I didn't watch it live. But you know, I, I didn't. The reason why I didn't watch it live because I was working. And so when I came back home, you know, I had, I had it recorded. And so I went in my DVR and I, I watched it. I watched it d- with the DVR, you know, while it was still live. And so, you know, when I was watching it, man, it was like, like when it got to certain parts, like it stopped, like the whole thing stopped and it wouldn't even play. And so I tried fast forwarding it, it still didn't work. I tried starting it over again. I started restarting my DVR, still didn't work. So, I, it, dude, it was pissing me off, dude. I was I was mad. I was I was really mad, and so I was like, you know what, man? Screw it, man. I'ma just I'ma just watch NXT another time. I'm just watching another time, and so I ended up watching it in like a, a short form. I got some clips of it. I didn't I didn't watch the entire thing, but I did get some parts of the show. I did I did watch the Killian Dane and Drake Maverick tag team championship match. That's the only thing that I saw, you know, while while I was watching the recording. And so yeah, so yeah, but yeah, I did get the first the first half of the show. So yeah, this is the NXT review for April 13th, 2021 on The Ryan Awesome Show. And if you haven't done this already, man, what are you waiting for, man? Hit the thumbs up. Hit the thumbs up. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And right next to that subscribe button, there's a bell. Make sure you click on that bell to be the first ones to know when my next video will come out. Because I say this all the time, man. I am here each and every single week. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and you turn on that bell for all notifications so you don't miss out. And so, yeah, man. So, yeah, we started off the show with the new NXT champion, Karrion Cross, And he's with Scarlett. And so, so Karrion Cross and, it, and Scarlett, they spoke. And so, Karrion Cross, he speaks about, you know, his future, his future as NXT champion. I told you. Time always comes full circle. It was only a matter of time until I was standing back in this ring, my ring, with this title, my title, as the NXT champion. So understand this, now the time has allowed the course to correct itself, I I'm in command of NXT until I say so. And you know, there's a funny saying. When you're at the top, there's nowhere else to go but down. Hmm. And I can reassure you, that is a complete and total lie. Because nobody is going to out-train me. Nobody's going to out-grind me. No one is going to out-wrestle me. And NXT has the hungriest guys and girls on the planet in this brand. But I'm starving. And I am insatiable. So this is how it's going to go. You want this? Step right up. And roll the dice, and I promise you I will roll every single one of you off your heads. Mm. Because I don't care who you are, where you've been, what championship titles you've won, what you think you're entitled to, or how many zeros are on the ends of your checks. I will fold every single one of you until there is no one left!
because no matter where the time is told, in the end, everybody pays the toll. And that was it. That was it. That's what Karrion Cross had to say about his future as NXT champion. He will go through everybody until there's nobody left. And, I, and you're right, too. Nobody. And I mean, nobody is beating Karrion Cross for that title. Nobody. And so, yeah, man. So, yeah, fiery, fiery promo from Karrion Cross. You know. So, yeah, that, that's what he had to say, man. Great, great promo, man, from Karrion Cross. And so, yeah, right after that, we had our first match of the night. And it was Killian Dane and Drake Maverick versus MSK, the new NXT Tag Team Champions. That's Nash Carter and Wesley for the NXT Tag Team Championships. So they have their first title defense. And so, yeah, so this is the match that I did watch. And so, yeah, we had, you know, Dane, he was using his power against Carter. And we had an elbow drop to Carter's back from Dane. We had drop kicks to Lee from Maverick. And then we had a Bronco Buster to Maverick from Carter. And so, yeah, we had Dane, you know, he caught Lee off of a Tope Suicida. And, he, you know, he slammed him into, a ape, into the ring apron. And so we had a crossbody. We had a crossbody to Lee outside the ring from Dane. And so we had a hot tag to Carter. He took out Maverick and Dane. And then we had a German suplex to Maverick from Carter. And then Dane, he had stopped the cover. And so MSK, they took out Dane. And we had a 619 and a super kick to Killian Dane from MSK. And we had a diving, spinning corkscrew to Dane from Wesley, which was beautiful. And Dane, he had kicked out of that. And so, yeah, we had a springboard DDT to Lee from Maverick. And we had a powerbomb to Carter from Dane. And so Dane, he tried to powerbomb, you know, his own partner. That's, that's one of their finishing moves, the powerbomb on top of somebody else. And so, yeah, so Dane, he tried to powerbomb Maverick on top of Carter. But Lee, Lee, he had stepped in at the last minute and moved carter out the way so dane he didn't he didn't see it and so dane he ended up power bombing his own partner you know on the mat so that's what you get for using your opponent not no that's what you get for using your tag team partner as a weapon he ended up biting him in the end and so yeah and so yeah so so yeah he power bombed him we had a screen a springboard cutter to killing dane from carter and we had msk to hit their finishing move to drake maverick to win the match and so MSK, they win the match and are still the NXT Tag Team Champions. And rightfully so, man. There, were no, there was no way. There was no way that they were going to take the titles off of them after, that, after they just won it. And plus, another thing, man. I don't know if y'all noticed it. Maybe y'all did notice it. Um, MSK, they got booed in the match. They got booed in the match. They were cheering Drake Maverick and Killian Dane. So, so yeah, I, th I thought that was really weird. They Like, MSK... They, they, they've been cheered the entire time, but they got booed this time. And so, yeah. And so, yeah, right after that, you know, we had Alexander Wolf. You know, he came out, you know, right after the match was over and everything. He had came out and he confronted Killian Dane. He got in his face. And so Eichner and Bartel, the rest of the Imperium, they had came out and attacked Dane. No Walter. Walter wasn't there. And so, yeah, Eichner, he had, spawn, he had a spawn buster on Dane. That was, that was nice. That was a nice move. To pick up a guy that size, Killian Dane is a big dude. He picked up Killian Dane and dropped him with a spine buster. So that was nice. And then Mar Bartel, he had kicked Dane in the face. And so that was it. And, uh, and Alexander Wolf, he had left the ring with Imperium. And that was it with that. And so, yeah, right after that, we had the Robert Stone brand. And so they were, they were backstage and everything. And so you had Robert Stone and Aaliyah. They were backstage. And so... So, yeah, they were, they were trying to get a work with Mr. Regal. They were trying to go in his, into his office or something like that. And so Mercedes Martinez, she had came out and interrupted them. And so, yeah, she had asked Robert Stone for a, for her money because Robert Stone, he had promised her money. You know, what, when was that? I think it was last week. They, they had a tag team match, and Robert Stone had promised her money, that he was going to pay her money, but she didn't get her money. And so, and so yeah, so Martinez, she ended up grabbing – you know, Aaliyah by her throat, like grabbing her by her throat and everything, you know, choking her out. And so Jesse, Mc, Jesse Kamea had came in. She had came in and, you know, stopped it, you know, got, got into Martinez's face and just challenged her to a match. And so that was it. And so, yeah, so we had a match between Martinez and 
Jesse Kamel later that day, later that night. And so, yeah, right after that, we had a video package of Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly in their unsanctioned match, the hell that they went through. And so, yeah, and that was it with that. And so right after that, we had the match. We had Mercedes Martinez versus Jesse Kamel with Robert Stone and Aaliyah in a corner. And so, yeah, this is this is this is a short match, dude. So, yeah, we had Kamel. She had hit a drop kick to Martinez. And so Kamel, she had took control of that of the match. And so, yeah, we had a jumping knee to Kamea. And then to end the match, we had Martinez. She hit the air raid crash to Kamea to win the match. And so, so Mar Mercedes Martinez wins the match. And so right after the match, we had Martinez. You know, she had chased chased after Robert Stone and Aaliyah. And so, yeah, she had caught Robert Stone. And she just pinned him into the plexiglass, you know, asked him about money. And so Robert Stone ended up handing her, like, $100 bills and everything. So she grabbed the money so she got the money from stone and she ended up counting the money and so she had went to the commentary desk and you know and she was yelling at vic joseph saying that you know raquel gonzalez i'm calling you out you know i'm calling you out and i want that title i want that nxt women's championship and so yeah and that was it and so yeah i'll say oh yeah so right after that man Right after that, we had The Way. We had Mackenzie Mitchell. She interviews The Way. And so, this, so that's Johnny Gargano, the NXT North American champion, Candice LeRae, Indy Hartwell, and Austin Theory. And, you know, they're talking about the eight-person tag, the eight-person intergender tag team match, and how they're going to win. You know, how, like their game plan on beating their opponents. And so, yeah. And right after that, we had a match. Well, first off, we had Santos Escobar, the NXT Undisputed Cruiserweight Championship, or NXT Undisputed Cruiserweight Champion. And so Santos Escobar and Legado Del Fantasma, Raul Mendoza, and Marquine Wilde came out to the ring. And then Santos Escobar had issued an open challenge. So he wanted, he challenged anybody in the Cruiserweight division to challenge him. And so Kushida had came out, and so he accepted the challenge. So it was a match, and it was for the NXT Cruiserweight Championship, and it was Kushida versus Santos Escobar the NXT Undisputed Cruiserweight Champion, Santos Escobar. And so, yeah, we had chops. So, yeah, this is the match. This match I caught in clips. I didn't watch the whole entire match. And so, yeah, we had chops to Kushida. We had double knees to Kushida in the corner. And we had a top rope hurricane around into Kushida, and she kicked out. I mean, he kicked out. We had a phantom driver. So, Santos Escobar, he tried to go for the phantom driver, his finishing move. But Kushida, he had reversed it. And he had hit a cartwheel drop kick to Escobar. And then, you know, he kicked Escobar in the arm. Of course he, of course he did. And so, yeah, we had a flip. So, yeah. So, Kushida, he had went to the top rope. And he had hit a flip, a back flip with Santos Escobar. And he just locked in the arm bar. And so, yeah, we had a double underhook suplex to Escobar. And so, he turned that into a bridge. And so, Escobar, you know, he couldn't kick out. He didn't have the power to kick out, so you know what he did? He put his foot on a rope, so that's a smart move. A great ring presence from Santos Escobar. And so, yeah, so Santos Escobar put his foot on a rope. And so at that point, you know, they were still fighting. They were kicking each other. And so Escobar, he had caught Kushida off of a springboard back elbow with a backstabber. So that was really nice. I love that spot. You know, great, great timing, too. And so, yeah. And so Santos Escobar, he tried to hit his finishing move, the Phantom Driver. And so Kushida, he had reversed it and turned it into a roll-up. And so they were they were going back and forth with roll-ups. And so Kushida, he get the better of it. He get the better of the roll-up. So Kushida, he had beat Santos Escobar. So Kushida wins and is the new Cruiserweight champion. And so at I, this is this is what I had a problem with, man. Like, why like why did they take the title off of Santos Escobar? Like right after he went through that ladder match with Jordan Devlin, he became the NXT unified undisputed cruiserweight champion and you have him lose the match you have him lose the match and a title the following week on nxt I, I, I didn't get that man i didn't understand that i didn't i didn't like that you know I'm, I'm happy for kushida that he finally got a championship but why why did he need to take the title off of escobar right after he had that ladder match with with jordan devlin I, like that's that's the one thing i didn't get you know good good match good match and everything but I, I still didn't understand why they took the title off of Escobar just to put it on Kushida. Right after Escobar had a, a, a takeover match. 
and he won and unified the cruiserweight titles. And so yeah. So yeah, so yeah, right after that, man, we had Tommaso Ciampa, the Sicilian psychopath Tommaso Ciampa, and Timothy Thatcher. They're backstage. The Dusty Classic tested our strength as a team. Walter and Imperium tested our will, our loyalty. Did we win every fight? No. Did we pass every test? I think so. And now we come out on the other side stronger as a unit, ready to face a new NXT, a new landscape. New NXT champion, new NXT tag team champion. What path to choose? It's standard procedure for us. We finish what we start. MSK, we're coming. And that was it. So Tommaso Ciampa and Timothy Thatcher, they want the NXT tag team titles. Why? I don't know. What what exactly had they done to earn a championship match? Why why are we handing out title shots? Why are we ta handing out tag team title matches? Why? You know, even though Killian Dane and Drake Maverick don't deserve a championship, at least they earn a right to the challenge for the tag team titles. Tommaso Ciampa and Timothy Thatcher didn't do nothing. Nothing. So yeah. I mean, I'm it'll be a great match and everything, but dude, give me a re Give me a reason on why you sh should deserve a championship match. Don't just don't just hand out title matches. Don't don't just say that. Oh, I want this. I want this championship match, dude. You're gonna have to prove yourself. You're gonna have to prove yourself if you want a title match. You're gonna have to prove yourself. And so yeah, that was it, man. With that, so it's gonna be MSK versus Tommaso Ciampa and Timothy Thatcher later on. And so right after that, we had Kushida. He was backstage. You know the new cruiserweight champion, Kushida. And so, yeah, William Regal, he had congratulated Kushida. And so, Jordan Devlin, he had came up to Kushida. He had congratulated, you know, Kushida. And that, you know, he was talking about Santos Escobar. And that, you know, beating, you know, Kushida beating Escobar makes him, you know, the best. And so, you know, and, es you know, Devlin, he had said that Escobar, you know, climbing up the ladder and grabbing the championships doesn't make him the better wrestler than Devlin. And so, Definitely, he has said that, you know, Kushida was lucky, you know, that, you know, he's he's lucky with the position that he's in right now because, you know, Devlin, Devlin for right now, he's going to go home, but he will be back, you know, and when he comes back, he's going to go right, right after the Cruiserweight Championship. And so that's, that's what happened, you know, backstage. And so, yeah, that was it with that. So right after that. We had Dakota Kai. She introduces Raquel Gonzalez. And Raquel Gonzalez, she speaks about, you know, becoming a new NXT Women's Champion. A year and a half ago was the biggest night in NXT history. NXT goes live on USA Network. And I was supposed to have my big debut. But I wasn't ready. I went home that night and I swore that that would never happen again. When my opportunity comes, I am going to be ready. So I busted my ass to move faster, train harder, lift heavier. And a year and a half later, I stand here as your NXT Women's Champion. Without Dakota Kai, I don't debut at Portland. We don't become the first ever NXT Women's Tag Team Champions, and I sure as hell don't stand here as your new NXT Women's Champion. You know, for 14 months, we dominated the best women's division in the world. And all the respect, all of the respect to Io Shirai. She was a great champion. Yeah. But the Ra 
Raquel Gonzalez era has officially begun. Congratulations. So yeah, we have right after that we have Frankie Monet or Frankie Monet. She interrupts Raquel Gonzalez, so she made her debut. She came out with her dog. Champ. Felicidades, campeona. I'm here to formally introduce myself to you and the world. I am La Huera Loca. I am Frankie Monet. And now the best division on this planet has gotten a little bit shinier, a little bit bougier, <laughs> and a whole lot better. And as you are at the top of my division, <laughs> you'll be seeing a whole lot more of me. You're lucky I'm in a good mood tonight. <laughs> because uh, if you interrupt me like that again, this cute little poochie, I'm gonna shove him straight up your culo. Oh, wow. <laughs> so Monet gets out of the ring. Okay, cabrona. <laughs> oh, wow. I will see you every single Tuesday, champ. <laughs> All right, so, so yeah, Frankie Monet, she got out of the ring, you know, which is a smart move. You don't, you don't want to fight with nobody, you know, they have a dog in their hand. You don't want to fight with nobody with a, a pet in their hand. So Frankie Monet, she did the right thing by getting out the ring. And so, yeah, right after that, you know, we had Rhea Ripley, the Raw Women's Champion, the new Raw Women's Champion, Rhea Ripley. We had Bianca Belair, the new SmackDown Women's Champion, had came out to the ring. And so they were standing side by side. NXT Women's Champion Raquel Gonzalez, Bianca Belair, and Rhea Ripley, they were standing together. Standing together. And so they were both, you know, they were all holding up their championships. And so they had a picture of them in the back, you know, that they took years ago. And so you have a picture of them now holding all championships in WWE. So, yeah, that was it with that. And so, yeah, you know, feel good moment, feel good moment for them. You know, seeing all friends, you know, them them being best friends and them becoming champion. You know, years ago, they didn't have nothing. They had no championships, but now they have the championships. So, yeah, that, that was a feel good moment for them. And so, yeah. So, yeah, right after that, we had, we had Sarai. So, yeah, they had a video package of Sarai, the newcomer from Japan. And they calling her the Warrior of the Sun. And so, yeah, she's making her debut next week. And so, yeah. And so right after that, we have Mackenzie Mitchell. She had caught up with Mr. Regal. And so Mr. Regal, he was talking about Sarai and that he was excited that Sarai is going to be coming to NXT next week. And so, yeah, he was finished talking to Mackenzie Mitchell. And so he had walked into his office. And you had Roderick Strong. Yeah, Roderick Strong and his wife, Marina Shafir. And so, yeah, so they were in his office. And so, yeah, Roddy, he said that he was done. He was done with NXT. So he, he's done with NXT. He's quitting NXT. And so, yeah, he had handed Mr. Regal his, you know, his papers, his resignation papers. And so, and so yeah, Mr. Regal, he had told him, you know, he had told Roddy that, you know, you're always welcome. You know, we, we've had our differences in the past. But, you know, you're always welcome. You're always welcome to come back to NXT. And so, yeah, that, that's what Mr. Regal has said to Roderick Strong. And so... Roddy is done with NXT, and so my question is, like, where, like, where is he gonna go? Where is he gonna go? Where is he gonna go? Is he gonna go to Monday Night Raw? Is he gonna go to SmackDown? No, no, please, for the love of God, no, do not put him on Monday Night Raw and don't put him on SmackDown. I, like, dude, they they will tear him to shreds, man. They they're gonna take a look at Roderick Strong, and they're they're gonna put him in a twenty four seven championship contention. That's, that's, gonna, that's what they're going to do to him. They're not going to do nothing with Roderick Strong. Nothing. They're not going to put him in the WWE Championship match. They're not going to put him in the ring with Bobby Lashley or, 
you know, Drew McIntyre, nobody. They're going to they're gonna treat them like trash, like they always done to every single person that they got, that they called up from NXT. And so, yeah, that was it with Roderick Strong. And so, yeah, right after this, we had a match, and it was Isaiah Swerve Scott versus Leon Ruff. And so, yeah, so, yeah, we had Leon Ruff. You know, he had gave Isaiah Swerve Scott flying the forearms. And we had a Russian leg sweep to Ruff off the second rope. And we had a pump kick to Ruff. And at Ruff, he started to fight back, you know. And then Scott, he had caught Ruff in midair with a cross arm bar. And then Ruff, he had fought out of the arm bar. And so we had a springboard cutter to Scott. And so we had an outside dive to Scott. And then we had a missile drop kick to Scott. And then Scott had kicked out of that. And we had a top rope hurricane around to Scott. And then Scott had kicked out of the move. And then Ruff, he tried to go for the top rope hurricane again. But Scott had muscled up Ruff. And then dropped some face first on a turnbuckle. And so to end the match, we had Scott. He had hit his finishing move to Ruff to end the match. So to win the match. And so Isaiah Swerve Scott wins the match. And that was it. I honestly, honestly, I do not care about this feud. I do not care about this feud. I don't. Because like like I like I'm not a I'm not a fan of Leon Ruff. I'm not a fan of Leon Ruff. I'm not. He just he just like it's it's the fact that you know the way that he been treated, dude. The way that he been treated, like when he first came in NXT, he was a jobber, dude. He was a jobber, and then they pushed him. They pushed him into the you know it pushed him to the top. They had him beat Johnny Gargano, which I didn't like. And so it's just it's just the fact that he's not believable. He's not believable as a challenger. He's not. And so yeah. So yeah, that that was it with that the match, you know the match was good. It was okay, but I'm not I'm not really much of a fan of the of the feud. And so yeah, right after that we had Zoe Stark. She's backstage, you know Mackenzie Mitchell. She had interviews Zoe Stark, and she's talking about you know her journey, you know, in NXT. How do you feel after competing in your first takeover, <laughs> Mackenzie? How would you feel if four months ago you were living in Las Vegas, struggling to make ends meet, and now you're here at NXT? You see, when I was living there, I was training every single day for eight hours a day. All that hard work and struggle, it finally got me here. And then on top of that, I got to have the biggest match in my career at the biggest takeover NXT has ever had against one of the best female wrestlers that there are, Tony Storm. I'm fantastic. And now I have my sights set on the ultimate goal, the NXT Women's whoa, Champion. Whoa, whoa. Mackenzie, whoa. why are you wasting your time on Mercedes. nobody? Mercedes. Everybody knows Mercedes Martinez is next in line for a title opportunity, not some rookie. Hmm. Rookie? We'll see you, though. <laughs> and that was it. So, might be seeing a match between Mercedes Martinez and Zoe Stark. And Zoe Stark, I don't, I, th I think it's too quick. It's too quick to push her, you know, in a NXT Championship contention match. You know, have her build up some more wins before you put her in a title match against Raquel Gonzalez. And whoever, whoever, whoever go up against Raquel Gonzalez, they are they are not going to beat Raquel Gonzalez. Just like what I said earlier with Karrion Cross, nobody is beating Raquel Gonzalez. Nobody is beating her. You've done a great job at building up Raquel Gonzalez. You're going to have her lose the championship? No, you're not going to do that. That's why every single contender, every single challenger that goes up against Raquel Gonzalez, they will lose. They will lose. That goes for anybody on that roster. They will lose to Raquel Gonzalez. And so, yeah, that was it with that. And so, yeah, right after that, we had Imperium. They spoke. That's Walter still the United Kingdom champion of NXT UK. And we had Alexander Wolf, Fabian Eichner, and Marcel Bartel. At NXT TakeOver Stand and Deliver, we proved again that Imperium is the most dominant force in all of professional wrestling. For the last two years, I've been the most dominant champion in WWE. And Tommaso Ciampa was one of the biggest challenges yet. But nothing changed. I'm still the NXT UK champion. Our crusade to restore the honor of this great sport is just beginning. Imperium will grow. Imperium will grow. 
Imperium will expand. Because Imperium is here to stay. And soon, all of NXT will understand what it means when we say the Met is sacred. Oh, wow. So that's it. That's it. So now when he said Imperium is expanding, I was like, oh, my God, <laughs> that, that is trouble. That is trouble. Now, since since Fabian Eichner and Marcel Bartel and Alexander Wolf are in the States, in the, you know, the United States, in NXT, is Walter going to bring up some more guys? Or is, you know, because I know Walter, he doesn't want to wrestle in the States. He doesn't want to stay in the States for a long time. You know, because he, he's mainly in NXT UK and he's the UK champion. He's the world champion of NXT UK. Now, we will he bring up some guys in NXT UK, you know, and have the guys in NXT UK. Yeah, they'll have like their own, their own Imperium in NXT UK. And we'll have like a United States version of, you know, the Imperium guys. I don't know, man. I guess I guess that's what he meant when he said we're going to expand, you know, NXT UK. They're going to have an Imperium group in NXT UK and Walter will lead that group. And we'll have someone lead the group in the United States of NXT. You know, NXT United States of Imperium. So yeah, you know, should should be good, man. I'm I'm a huge fan of Walter and Imperium, man. I love I love them in NXT UK. And so yeah. So yeah, so right after that we have Mackenzie Mitchell. She had interviewed Isaiah Swerve Scott. And so she had asked Scott, you know, is your feud, you know, is the feud over? Is it over between you and Ruff? And so Scott, he had, you know, before Scott could even speak, you know, we had Leon Ruff. He had attack. He had attack. You know, Scott. He had beat up Scott. And so Scott, well, well, Scott, he did speak. He said that, you know, I made my statement. And so Ruff, he had beat up Scott. And so Ruff, he had yelled out to Scott. He was like, you know, it's not over until I say it's over. And so that was it. And I was like, man, dude, like what? It's not over until you say it's over. Like, dude, you lost. You lost. And you being a sore loser. You being a sore loser and you lost. Like you lost, you lost fair and square. He didn't cheat to beat you. You lost. So it should be over. It should be over. So I I, I agree with Isaiah Swear Scott. You know, go like go somewhere else, dude. Go somewhere else, Leon Ruff. So yeah, that, that was it with that. And so right after that, we had the main event. And it was the eight person tag, the eight person mix tag. And it was it was Shotzi Blackheart and Ember Moon, the NXT Women's Tag Team Champions, Bronson Reed and Dexter Loomis versus The Way, Johnny Gargano, the NXT North American Champion, Candice LeRae, Indy Hartwell, and Austin Theory. Now, this match was good. It was, it was good, but I, I had a problem with this match. I really did, man. I, I had a problem with it. It's like, it's like, dude, like, like, like the rules of a mixed tag team match in WWE is that you know, the men can't wrestle the women. And, uh, like, dude, it don't make any sense. Like, why is it okay? Like, why is it okay for the women to wrestle the men, but not the men wrestling the women? Like, why is it okay for the women to hit the men and, and the men not hitting the women? That's, like, dude, I don't understand that. I don't understand that. Like, if you're going like, to put some a woman in a ring with a guy, like, dude, the guy should have some offense in. The guy should be able to hit the woman since the woman is hitting the guy. Like, dude, <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. And so, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, we had Theory and Loomis. They went back and forth. And then at one point, we had Hartwell. She wanted to tag in. You know, she wanted to tag herself in, you know, to get in the ring with Dexter Loomis because Loomis, he was already in the ring. And so, Theory, he had tagged Candice LeRae instead. And so, LeRae, she had gotten Loomis's face. And then Moon had caught LeRae with a drop kick. And so, yeah, we had a double team move to LeRae from Moon and Blackheart. And then, you know, Johnny, he had saved LeRae from a beating from Moon and Blackheart. And so Moon and Blackheart, they had took out Johnny Gargano. I did I did not like that, you know, because, again, you know, Johnny Gargano, he's the NXT North American champion. And you're going to have him get beat up by two girls, man, by two women. Like, dude, like, how does that make Johnny Gargano look strong? How does that make any man look strong getting beat up by a woman? I, like, I don't, I don't understand that, man. I don't. I do not understand that. And so, yeah, we had a pop-up uh, uppercut to Gargano from Loomis. And then Loomis, he had took out Theory. And then Loomis and Hartwell, they locked eyes, so they were staring at each other. And then Hartwell, she was about to kiss Dexter Loomis. But Candice LeRae, she had yanked Indy Hartwell off the apron. 
And so, yeah, Gargano, he had attacked Loomis from behind. And so, Reed, he had took out Gargano in theory with a corner splash. And so, yeah, we had a double Samoan drop to Gargano in theory from Bronson Reed. And so, LeRae and Hartwell, they had broke up the pin. And so, LeRae, you know, LeRae and Hartwell and Moon and Blackheart, they were going at it. And so, we had a pop-up spine buster to Moon from Hartwell. And so, yeah, we had a DDT to Hartwell from Shotzi. And we had a super kick to Shotzi from LeRae. And then LeRae, she tried to dive on Shotzi, but Bronson Reed had gotten away in LeRae's way, no pun intended. And so, yeah. So, yeah, so Bronson Reed got in her way. And so, so Candice LeRae, she was she was about to dive on Bronson Reed. She was about to give Bronson Reed a cross body, a diving cross body. Why? I don't know. Why would you try to do that? I know, I know Candice LeRae is tough. She's been in the ring with guys. But come on, you, you are not going to beat Bronson Reed. So, yeah, she had jumped off the top rope, and she just went splat on the mat. She went splat on the mat. It did not phase uh, uh, Bronson Reed. Because Bronson Reed is a big dude. Bronson Reed is a big freaking dude. And Candice LeRae is so tiny. And she tried to dive on Bronson Reed. And so Bronson Reed, he didn't do nothing. He didn't do nothing. She just fell on the mat. And so, yeah. And so, yeah, we had Theory. He had took out Reed with a springboard drop kick. And we had a spine buster to Theory from Loomis. And then Gargano, he had took out Loomis out of the ring. And so we had a Tope Suicida to Gargano from Moon. Again, like, like, dude, if you're gonna let the woman, if you're gonna let the women hit the moves on the guys, then let the guys hit a move on the women, man. That's that's the thing. And so yeah, we had a tope suicida into a DDT to Loomis from Candice LeRae. Again, you know, T Candice LeRae, she could take a bump from a guy, man. She been in the ring with guys. She, she like, yeah, yeah. So yeah, right after that, we had Reed. He had th Reed had threw Shotzi, Blackheart on everybody outside the ring. And so, yeah, we had a super kick to to Bronson Reed from Gargano. And then we had Dexter Loomis. He had locked in a submission move, the silence on Johnny Gargano. And then Hartwell, she had saw it. She had saw Dexter Loomis had the move on Johnny Gargano. And then at one point, she was she was debating on whether she should stop the, the, you know, stop the submission move or not. And so, yeah, she ended up, you know, falling on a mat. You know, she fell on a mat to get Dexter Loomis' attention. And so... Dexter Loomis, he had heard somebody fall on the mat. And so Dexter Loomis, he had turned around and he saw Indy Hartwell on the mat. And so he had went to go check on Indy Hartwell. And so Indy Hartwell, she tried to go for a kiss. And so Austin Theory, he had attacked Dexter Loomis from behind. And so, and so yeah, Indy Hartwell, she was upset. She was mad about it. And so she ended up throwing Austin Theory out of the ring. And so she ended up falling. She ended up falling again, getting back in getting back into position and so yeah Dexter Loomis he had saw Indy Hartwell on the floor again on the ground on the mat and so he ended up carrying her to the back and so yeah so Indy Hartwell she smiled she had smiled she looked into the camera she had smiled and she had wink and so she had went back to sleep and so that was it so Dexter Loomis had took her to the back and so yeah and so yeah we had Reed so yeah we had Reed he had caught Austin Theory in midair with a forearm, which was a nice, a nice sight. And so yeah, we had Moon. She had jumped off of Reed's shoulders to hit a eclipse on Austin Theory. You know, Austin Theory he had sold it really well. And so yeah, we had Larray took out Moon after that. And so Bronson Reed from the top rope. You know, because Bronson Reed he was trying to go for his finishing move, the tsunami, but Gargano he had stopped it. And so you know they were fighting at the top rope. And so Gargano. Yeah, Austin Theory, he had, th not Austin Theory, we had Bronson Reed, he had threw Gargano right on top of Austin Theory. And so he had threw, right, threw him right on top of Austin Theory. And so we had LeRae, again, still going at Bronson Reed. She tried to superplex Bronson Reed. Why? I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah, she tried to superplex Bronson Reed. And so, but Shassi Blackheart had stopped Candice LeRae. And so Shassi Blackheart ended up throwing Candice LeRae on Austin Theory. So that's two splashes. So Austin Theory took two splashes. And so we had Bronson Reed. This is my favorite part. We had Bronson Reed. He had went to the top rope. And he had hit his finishing move on Austin Theory. The tsunami, that 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 top rope splash. And so, yeah, he hit he hit the move on Austin Theory. At that point, I was like, oh, my gosh, man, I feel bad for Austin Theory. He took a splash from Johnny Gargano, a splash from Candice LeRae, and then another splash from Bronson Reed. So I was like, oh, my God, man. Oh man, Austin Theory, he is not he is not good. And so yeah, so so Bronson Reed he wins the match. So Bronson Reed, Dexter Loomis, and 
Ember Moon and Shasi Blackheart, they won a match. And that was it, man. That was it. You know, good match, but I'm, I'm still not a fan of, you know, the rules of the intergender match in WWE. Like, why is it okay for the women to hit the men? And, is you know, it's not okay for the men to hit the women. Like, I don't understand that. And so, yeah, that was, that was it with the show. You know, that was it with the show. It was an okay show. It was decent, but it wasn't the best show. You know, it wasn't even it, it wasn't even a bad show. But, yeah. So, yeah, man, that was the review. It was the NXT review for April 13th, 2021 on D. Ryan Awesome Show. And, yeah, man, this is the first episode on Tuesday. So, yeah. So, that's it, man. So, if you like this video, man, what are you waiting for, man? Hit the thumbs up. Hit the thumbs up. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And right next to that subscribe button, there's a bell. Make sure you click on that bell so you'll be the first ones to know when my next video will come out. Because I'm here each and every single week. So, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out. Follow me on Twitter at Ryan Awesome Show. And comment down below, man. Tell me how you felt about this episode of NXT. And yeah, man, and if you missed last week's episode of NXT, the video is going to be right up here in this corner. It's going to be up right here in this corner. And also, the link to that video will be down below in the description. So make sure you check it out if you missed it. And yeah, man, I'll see you guys for Wednesday for AEW Dynamite. And I'm recording this, I'm recording this right before Dynamite. So you'll be seeing this right after Dynamite is over. So I'm recording this right before Dynamite. So I'll see you guys for Dynamite. And yeah, man. And once again, guys, thank you for the support. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. And this has been the Ryan Awesome Show. Take care. Stay safe. And that's that.